Thank you. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Phil Mayo. I'd like to invite you to your ringside seat at the Kyokushin Kai World Rated Championships which are here held in Holland. Kyokushin Kai, if you don't know, is uh, an international form of karate which was invented by the great Masayama of Japan. It's now practiced and fought throughout the world. Basically, I'll run through the, uh, the rules as we go on in the competition with you. As you can see here, the fight is taken, the fight is taken part on a, a matted area of around about 25 feet square. Each competitor is allowed to strike to almost all the areas of the body except to the face with the fists. But they are allowed to strike to the face and head with the legs. Consequently, as you see, ma the majority of the punching will be directed towards the midsection. The aim is to basically score on, on points or ultimately by a knockdown or even knockout if possible. In this case, you're allowed to do that, as I say, with a kick to the head, but not with a punch to the head. They can also strike to the opponent. The Gangnam Sam of Korea against Gary Hall of Great Britain. Now that's interesting. Even that little movement there from Gangnong Sam, he's very, very light on his feet. He's going to be a very fast fighter, this one. 
certainly he's faster off the initiation than Hall. Oh, good grief. That was a super climbing up there with the front kick and just coming off with a spinning hook kick to the chin. Now that was very fast indeed. Korean is a super, super fast man. Nice hook kick. Sorry, axe kick attempt. Korean changing his stance quite a bit here. All looking a little bit led off. And walking through axe kick attempt again. Very, very fast indeed the Korean. Paul really perplexed to know what to do. Back thrust kick attempt there, but no, no real initial speed. Korean very, very confident in his abilities. Picking his distance, measuring it accurately. Last kick attempt there by Kang Lung Sam. And axe kick again. Just brushing past the target area. Oh, and coming off of that back leg round kick, running hall backwards and really waited on that kick and just let it go at the right moment. Super technique. Yes, he's, he's caught Hall on the side of the face there. He's injured him. So jamming in there with that front kick and climbing with that spinning hook kick attempt earlier on in the contest. Little mark there under Hall's eye from that roundhouse kick. Fighters there didn't really have the range they needed. Being brought back to the centre by the referee. And a warning there against Hall. So you can see there, Hall certainly can't initiate as fast as the Korean. Strong, strong, heavy man Hall, but he hasn't really got that, that same blinding speed. Spinning hook kick again there by the Korean, hitting on the side of Hall's head, referee waving the score. Why? Not calling it. Flurry take this game and <laughs> the head protector taken off a fool's head there by a round kick by Daniel Sang. All seems to favour back thrust kick. A little bit too sharp to let him land it properly. away, comes back, picks his distance again. Waiting, waiting. He knows he's faster than Hall. He lets Hall initiate and relies on his sharper speed. And we see a slow motion replay jamming in there with a front kick and a an back leg round kick attempt and a sp Spinning hook kick comes off and it just hits Hall in the centre of the head and Gang Lung Sam losing balance. And that roundhouse kick that takes off the head guard there. So at the end of the first round there, both fighters now being told exactly what they should do by respective coaches. Korean, of course, Gang Lung Sam knows what he has to do. He knows he's faster. His tactics must be to wait, let Hall initiate, 
and then rely on a superior speed to counter. Let's just see if he does that. Time the dist mistimed it and misjudged the distance there. Again, you know what I'm Again, you can see how much faster he is. When Hall moves in, he just moves, moves straight out of range. And he runs Hall backwards and a round kick attempt and a back thrust kick. That this is super stuff. Oh, and the spinning hook kick again by Gamewell Sam. hand punch there followed up with a round kick but already Hall was falling away it's not in Game Young Sam's interest to turn it into rough and tumble because he certainly does have the sharper skills and it's better for him to wait and pick rather than clash and maybe get caught by a an unseen technique. Oh, nice, nice kick there by, by Hall. Spun with the roundhouse and just hit him in the body. Would have done Hall's confidence the world of good there. He needed a score. He needed to pick himself up mentally. Just what the doctor ordered. Back thrust kick attempt there by Hall. And the Korean came to the back of the body. Nice spirit there by both lads, shaking each other's hand. Let's wait the decision. Yes, and it's game wrong, Sam. Well, of course it would be. He had by far the sharpest skills. But all credit to Hall, he never said die. Carried on, taking away there. Got some nice scores in at the back, but uh, credit goes to the sharper man. Just see some of the skills there in the last round. Round kick just brushing past. Spinning hook kick coming in there. That's a lovely example of the of ability. So we move on to the next contest, the third in the evening. This fight is between Kim Chaw Ho, third down gold medalist in the TKD Championships in 89, and David Bailey, the British team captain. Bailey with a whole host of honours. One of the leading lights in the British team. Nice exchange there. This is what's nice about this this evening. That there's a lot of friendship out there. There's a lot of spirit of Taekwondo. Nice martial spirit, married to aggression and skill. That's what we want to see. Whole thing's good humour, but nonetheless, very, very hard fought up to now. Okay, so start with the first round. Kim Chaw Ho against Bay 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 Bay. Back to the attempt by Bailey. Both of them out of the area being called back to the centre by referee. It's looking a little bit nervous there. Didn't quite settle down. Yep. Axe 
quick attempt there off the lead leg by Kim Chol Ho. Round kick really brushing Davies arm. Okay, it's warming up a little bit more now. Both lads trying a few techniques, starting to get their timing together. Both lads spun and kick, both missed. Nice short roundhouse attempt there, Jim Cho Ho. Bailey tends to lunge in a little bit there, up to now. Kim hasn't really caught him as he's moved in. It's the end of round one. We'll just see what they say now over there. Team coach, he's got to be telling him to wait for Bailey. Bailey's lunging in a few times. It's the Korean weights, he's got him. Now that's typical. Bailey lunged in the Korean countering. That's been the hallmark up to now, really. The Koreans have really concentrated on blistering opening attacks and just waiting on the British opponent to try and get back. Catching the Zeno. Outside the area, referee bring him back to the centre. Again, back mid round and a spinning round kick. Again, same technique again. It's getting corrected there by the referee. Pulling in. Oh, and a spin hook attempt there by Kim Cho Ho. Probably the cleanest technique up to date. Slow motion repair, summon action here. Pushing front kick going in there. Pushing Bailey back. Okay, coming out for the next round. Korean slightly in front, my card. Nice spin hook attempt there by Bailey. It's a little bit low, both legs exchanging round here. Time out by the referee. Adjustment there to Bailey's body protector. Okay, Bailey getting another warning for holding there, coming in. Oh, and his Korean spun there and caught Bailey on the back of the head with a roundhouse kick. And again, another short roundhouse to the body. Korean, 
Brady just turning away. Roundhouse counter by Crick. And again, and again, and finally finishing off for an Axky attempt. That was two short round kicks to the body and an Axky attempt as well. And gradually edging up on the, on the lead. He's given Bailey quite a bit of work to do. by Bailey there. Korean seeing it just ducking out of out of the angle. Well Bailey's not inhibited by the Korean at all. He's getting his technique more and more together as the contest wears on. Uh, interesting to see now who gets the decision. I would think it's got to be the Korean. Calling them back to the centre. Yes, the Korean got the decision. Jim Cole. Congratulations for both lads. Kim Jo Ho just getting the decision as we expected. Okay, so we move along now to fight number four of the evening between Choi Sing Jai, third man, a gold medalist in the National Taekwondo Championships in Korea, and Ian Willock, first man, who was the British champion in 88 and 89 and the European Cup silver medalist in Spain in 1989. This is a very high gra highly graded Korean side here. We've got nothing less than a third band so far. So Willock then expected to do quite well. Um, he's got some very impressive credentials. He's won his honours over the years. We expect him to come out here and not be too inhibited by the career. And he is the bigger man. We expect him to use that. Choi Sing Jai, he's not quite as talented as, as some in the Korean team, but nevertheless, he got a gold medal in the national championships in Korea, so we know he's no slouch. Three nil to the Korean so far. What's gonna happen in match four? Another round of applause from the crowd for the etiquette being displayed here. Lots of friendship out there. Both, both national sides very, very happy to uh, shake each other's hands and, and enter into the spirit of Taekwondo. It's what we like to see about our martial arts. We want to see competitive, we want to see determination, we want to see people trying, but we want the friendship there as well. That's what martial arts is all about. Okay, so away we go then. And already we can see we look straight out there. Oh, and the Korean spun round kick to the body. We look the much bigger man as you can see there. He's going to impose himself on this Korean, I'm sure. Fancy the British to win this one. Back thrust kick there, just as Choice and Jai moved in. That guy, see we look, he's very, very fast for a big man. Very strong, but very fast off the initiation. My money's on the British in this, in this particular contest. We want to see him pull one back. Yeah, we look. Willock looking very happy with life out there. He's trusting to his technique. He's not phased at all by the Korean. Nice kick attempt by the Korean there. Back piercing kick, right jumping, skipping, just as Willock moved in. Lovely technique, super fun. That's 
Sue. Pushing through front kick there by Willock. See, he bounces up and down on his toes there. He knows he's a big man, bouncing up and down on his toes. He cuts down on the inertia that way when he moves off. So many of the British fighters so far have been flat-footed, but this guy's up on his toes. He knows what he wants to do. Okay, that's the end of the first round. So, Britain in here with a very good chance to pull one back. Now, what's he going to be told? More of the same, I hope. Just watch the English boy. He's up onto his toes. Watch him there, and he turns back thrust just as the Korean comes in. Now, what makes him able to do that is he does get up onto his toes. It makes him lighter. Knocking the Korean down. And when you're a big, heavy man, you can't afford to stand there. It kind of builds up in the leg muscles. The tension's there, and you're slow off the movement. If you're up and bouncing on your toes, you're going to be faster off the initiation. Willock certainly knows that, and he's certainly using it. Coaching Willock, sending him out to do the business in the second round, the second round of this competition. So where are we going? Already Willock up on his toes, and there again, that back thrust kick attempt. Now that's a exact repeat of what happened in the last round there. He's bouncing up and down on his toes. Again, again, he wants to move. Big man, he loves movement. You'd expect the speed to come from the smaller man. That's not happening here. Willock is stealing it away from this Korean. Again, he's up on his toes. He's got a good game plan, Willock, and he's sticking to it. And a round kick there as he turns around, he just catches the Korean. Nice round kick by Willock. And Choi Sing Jai comes off with one of his own to the head. Oh, this is wonderful stuff from the British. This is wonderful stuff there. Got the Korean going back, kept him on the run. It's much, much harder to kick when you're going back. It's far easier to move forward, machine gunning as you go. We look really confident. And a back class kick again. This is super stuff by the British boy. Really knows what he's doing out there. Knows exactly what he's got to do. Korean, Korean way behind at this stage, I'm sure. The trip there as he moved in. Got caught on the lead leg. Isn't it nice to see the British contingent very, very confident? It hasn't happened much this evening. They've all looked a little bit rattled, a bit stressed. Tim back. Oh. That is super. That is absolutely super. Spinning back hit. And caught him just as he moved in. Now the scores that Willock's build up really enabled him to just move in there. Now that, that's fascinating. That's absolutely fascinating. We, it, we would expect Willock now to be well in charge. This means when they come out for the last round, he can afford to attack. He knows he's well in front. He can afford to just try a little bit harder, put a few more scores on the board, make it impossible for the Korean. Here we see that running attack by Willock. One technique after the other, pushing the Korean backward. Technique after technique. Back thrust kick attempt, brushed aside, and again Willock is in there with his round kick. So the English boy well ahead on my scorecard. Third round, he's got nothing to lose by pushing that score along. The Korean's got to pull out something pretty magic out of the bag at this stage of the game. Super technique. What did I ask say about magic? Well, you ask the career for something and he comes out and he gives it to you. Spinning round kick there, straight to the face. Lovely technique. And again, just countered uh, Willock there. It was a bit slow off the mark that time. And a back to us kick attempt again the there. Just caught the career.
time running out for Choice Enjoy. Seconds ticking away all the time. We look back on his toes again. Oh, oh, so casually lets the hook kick go past his face. Th there is a man who knows exactly what he's about. Get outside the air, referee's going to bring him back to the centre again. Very little time left now. Well, Crim's got to do something pretty spectacular. Oh, and will it just change tactics there and put in the body punch? Well, that's it. Must be Willock's competition. We'll have to see. We'll have to await the judge's decision, but I'm sure Willock's got it there by a mile. Well, that's one back for the British boys, so it's 3-1 then. 3-1 to Korea. Let's just wait for official confirmation. Oh. Well, that's an example of what Willock was doing throughout the competition there. He just absorbed what the Korean had and come off it with his own technique. And there was that roundhouse kick attempt there by Chong Sing Jai. Yes, it had to be. Willa called away there and the crowd going mad now. That's what they wanted. They wanted to put one back and they have done. So there's Willa then just going around. The crowd have pulled again. That's what the British fans have said. But nice, nice little touch there by the Korean coach. Just ruffles his hair. This is what it's all about. This is tough. Right? Good, tough, aggressive competition, but equally the friendship. Okay, moving along now, we come to a bantamweight competition between Joy Young Nam, third band, gold medalist in the World Games in Germany 1989, and the World Cup gold medalist in Cairo. Against Carl Jacobs, second down of Great Britain, British champion 88 89, silver medalist in Belgium in 89 and a bronze European Cup in Spain. Jacobs from Manchester and Choi Young Nam, obviously from Korea. But Jacobs very, very experienced and so is Choi Young Nam. Now, this is pretty even Stevens uh, looking at the uh, track record of both these guys. Obviously Jacobs going to be much much more buoyant as a result of seeing what Willock has done by taking the fight to the Koreans. Let's see if he can take the fight to the Koreans as well. Again, the main factor has been with the Koreans is their initial opening speed. And the only one they lost tonight, Choi Shing Jai, the only reason he lost was he didn't have the same speed as Willock off the mark. Now let's just see if both of these guys can, uh, can really dominate the other one and see if they do it in the same way. So Choi Young Man then third Dan against Carl Jacobs of Great Britain. Here we go for round one. Lovely spinning back kick by the Korean and a hook kick. Jacob's trying some of his own techniques there, but very, very scrappy. Korean was very, very fast off the mark. Yeah. Just getting a referee on the wall. Warning from the referee there, Jacobs. Oh yes, nice punch there by Jacobs. Spot shifted, let the crew move in and just counted in with the right punch.
Interesting, Jacobs isn't up on his toes like uh, Willock before him. A bit more flat-footed again. As we've already said, that was Willock's secret, really, was getting on his toes and being fast in initiation. Pete Jacobs isn't picking up on that. And again the punch by Jacobs, he's twice he's used that as a counter. Falling away as he tried to spinning hook in the attempt. A little bit of tension in, neither man really letting the technique go. Jacobs being warm for pulling and Cho Yung Nam. Same. It's the end of the first round. That one has to go to Choi Young Nam. Um, Jacob's got two scoring punches there. We can expect to see a little bit more of that. Um, he certainly his leg skills aren't as good as the Koreans. But uh, I'm sure he can find some tactics to jam the Korean and score with body punches again. Because when he spot shifted and went, worked very, very well for him. Korea in there, just catching him almost a side kick but he was just turning away sort of half back kick half side kick jake was moving in with his own axe kick attempt okay, here we go for round two jacob's first up to the mark he's good on with action Ah, very, very sharp move by there by the Korean. Axe kick off the lead leg. And again, we see that body punch attempt by, by Jacobs. Ah, Jacobs hopping through there and uh, Choi Young Nam jumping spinning hook. Just missing the target here. dominating this at this stage as well. Again, Korean spun and Jacobs just waited on him and put in that right hand counter punch as he, as he moved in. Oh. A uh, counter by Jacobs with a round kick followed by a spinning movement and the Korean counter to him. Jacobs favouring the axe kick, it's not really working for him. And again the punch which is... Jacobs, you could see on Jacobs' face he thought about the punch there, then thought better of it and didn't do it, which was a shame. Keeps throwing that axe kick, not really working for him. Going back. I make the Korean in front on this stage. Certainly his, uh, his leg techniques are sharper. Jacobs can't be that far behind because he has scored at least four scoring punches. But there we can see why the Korean's in front. Catching Jacobs just as he moved in there. and the jumping spinning hook kick counter by Chong <laughs> and Nam. Certainly overall, the Korean team is much more highly graded and, and it's showing in the techniques. Hopping around that, moving in, and a jumping spinning technique by Sure, young man, but Jacob's just falling as he went to my score. Just 
change of kicks here. Spinning back to us, kick there by the Korean. And again. Yes, he's edged ahead there, certainly in the latter half of the fight. He's just upped his score a bit more, and Jacobs has just fallen away that little bit. Spinning round out by the crew now. Connected a little bit too high up on the leg. Oh, he just waited for him, just hit him. Uh, the crew must be a mile in front at this stage. So well, we wait for the decision then. That was a, an interesting fight. I think we saw the Koreans re establish their authority. And we're now back to 4 1. Just got to wait for judge's confirmation of that, but I think we'll see the Korean. Yes, there it is. It nicely accepted by Kyle Jackets. Once again, lads, shake hands, smiles all around. He acknowledges it. There's no bad temper out there tonight. And the next match, we of some of the action here. Korean moving in. Leaping psychic attempt there. Bubbling Jacobs over, pushing him and losing him, spinning, 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 coming up with a spinning hook kick, coming through just short of the target there. So this is the sixth competition of the evening. Between from Britain, the guy in your frame there, Dave Hook, second Dan, British champion 89, British junior champion 88, gold medalist in the Belgian Open in 1989 from Widnes in Cheshire. Very, very skillful man, Mr. Hook. We expect to see some blinding skills from him tonight. He's up against Lee Hong Suk, third Dan, gold medalist in ninth world championships of TKD. Again, another third Dan from Korea. They're very, very highly graded, these Koreans. They've come to win. This is a super team they've produced. Um, very few lightweights in it. They're all very much masters of what they're doing. They've hooked them from Great Britain, Lee Hook Sung from Korea. This is a middleweight contest. Again, over three rounds. And the Korean straight in there for a round kick to the body. Okay, looking a bit nervous out there. Korean being told to wait. Dad's looking a little bit tall. Kring keeps bringing his lead leg up there. It's hard to say what he's going to do. It's probably a lead hook. It'll be very interesting to see. Dave Hook should take that on board and be aware of what the Korean's doing. Let's see 
with a lead hook or an axe kick, he's going to try and come off there. And uh, the British boy should pick up on that pretty quickly because the Koreans initiated a couple of moves there with it. Obviously a favourite technique of his. Ah, oh, nice back thrust kick there by Dave Hook, the British boy. Caught the Korean as he moved in there. Nice score. And a punch, the Korean spun. Dave Hook waited through the counter, right hand to the body. Nice, very nice by the Korean there. Clash of legs, British boy's gone over, no score. Referee signaling, no score. Turning away as he's doing. Nice short roundhouse nice kick there by English boy Dave Hook. End of round one. So pretty even the first round there. Dave Hook. Nice punches, the Korean uh, showing promise on his lead leg. It's either a hook or an axe, I haven't really decided yet. Hard to pick up the angle, but uh, it's, it's certainly something which Hook needs to watch. So not much between these two lads as they come out for the second round. Nice spinning hook kick attempt there by Dave Hook. Hook by name and hook by nature. Oh, and that's what we suspected. See that flashing lead leg axe hit come straight down there, striking Dave Hook on the top of the head. He's getting a count from the referee. Lovely technique. They should have been warned because that leg does come up all the time on initiation. The crew knows what he's got to do now. Straight in with it again. He's at the right distance this time. Nice short punch there by Dave Hook. But that's the danger weapon of the Korean then. Nice axe attempt there by Dave Hook. And coming off it with a punch. Short of score. Off the back leg that time. Dave Hook just hitting into the body punch. Hook clawing back a little bit. Referee calling time out as the English boy's head protector is adjusted. Back to the mark now. Blank attempt by the Korean. Back thrust of attempt. getting told for pushing hook out the area there. Nice spin back kick there. And again off the lead leg, that axe kick, just as Dave Hook moves in, the Korean just drops it on him. End of round two. So that knocked down then making all the difference. The Korean then well ahead on that round. Uh, Dave Hook, the British boy, got a lot to do on the third round. Let's just watch the slow motion replay of it. Look, dropping axe. If ever there was a textbook example of the technique, that was it. Moving in, knee height, right up. His knee was nicely tucked into his chest and he just let it fold out and drop down. Lovely axe kick. The final round then, the Korean in the lead, that knockdown making all the difference. English boy with it all to do. Just 
Oh, straight in again. Super technique there. Lee Hung Suk, straight in. As soon as the referee said begin, he's straight out there, dropped the axe kicks right on, on hook, and he's marked him. He's called him on the eye there. Yeah, I think you can see it there. It's going black as we look at it. Super technique. And that's by hook into the body there, bit short. Both legs being told for pulling her opponent on. Gain hook attempt there by the sorry, the axe attempt by the Korean. Dave Hook trying to jump the spinning back thrust. Scrappy referee breaking them up, bringing them back to the middle. So the Korean well in front now. Referee looking back at his coach there. Obviously getting signals on the time. Both players must be acutely aware of it by now. Now that's by the Korean. Not much time left at all for the English boys to do anything about this. And again, dropping axe by the Korean. Well, that, that's really the contest beyond any doubt whatsoever now. Really proving his superiority with that technique. English boy looking rather ragged. Again, is there no stop in this career? And although Hook comes off it with a punch of his own to the body, that the, the axe kick was there first of all. Superbly controlled. Well, if ever there was a demonstration of how to use a hook kick in competition, that is it. So, uh, an axe kick in competition, that's it. So fight number six going to the Korean, surely. And that must mean the Koreans are 5-1 in the league. Slow motion replay, watch it fold out, strike down. Marvellous, marvellous technique. So this is the seventh fight of the evening between Shin Woo Hung and Wayne Green of Great Britain. Green, British champion, 88, 89. Doncaster, Yorkshire and Shin Woo Hung, third Dan gold medalist in the six Asian Taekwondo games in 1989. The English team now 6-1 down, looking to Green to pull something out the uh, fire. Looking quite confident now. has half front kick there. Korean coming off with his own technique. And Green certainly quick off the mark. on his feet. Ah, oh, nice lead leg side kick. And a round kick. Ah, oh, a spinning hook kick. Very, very fast initiation there by Green. Ah, 
Oh, nice back thrust kick there by Green. He really caught the Korean as he moved in. And the Korean scored with round kicks. Green's back thrust kick was the turning technique in that exchange. Green confident to stand still, let the Korean initiate, and just wait for his counter. Lots of confidence from the English boy. Oh, nice push and cycle by the Korean. And Green back out of the uh, area. Both his legs, a little fire, a little confidence. End of the first round. Well, that was pretty Stevens. Um, Bit of a slow motion replay is showing some of the action. You can see the Korean moving in there, but Green's back thrust kick was the telling kick of the exchange. It's round two then. It's a very, very enjoyable contest. Back to us kick there by Green, right in the middle of the target area. Again, again. Waiting, and again as he drops away. Really waiting on the Korean on that one. He has got some poor timing with that technique. Again, he's got the Korean rattled here a little bit. Looking a little bit flustered here. He seems to have the edge on speed. Back thrust kick by the career now, caught green. Roundhouse missed. Greens he walked through. Not quite flash, but the technique still scoring, I'm sure. Green coming back into this in the latter half of the second round. Two then. Interesting one that. Green taking the honours in the first half and the second round. The Korean coming back at him. See some of the slow motion replay. That's that spinning back kick there by Green. Yes, on reflection, perhaps that just dead edge in the round. We'll have to see. Certainly there's not a great deal in it. Both lads then coming out into the centre once again. This is the third round, everything to play for. by Green. He's really firing now. He's up on his toes, moving around.
timeout. Queen just adjusting his shin protector. Oh, and Green knocks him down again. That must give him the edge. Oh, lovely round kick by the Korean there. And wonderful scoring technique. Very hard to say who's in front at this stage of the game. So that's it then. The end of the seventh contest. It's going to be very, very interesting to see who's won this one. Green doing some superb work with a back smash kick. Korean coming back at him. Congratulations there from the Korean team coach. Does that mean he thinks Green's won? Decision must be close. Referee calling both boys back to the middle now. And the Korean has got it. Now, that's a bit of a surprise. I thought, if anyway, it would have probably gone to green. But the Korean has won it. Congratulations to him. But a 7 1 in the lead, the Korean. So now we come to the final competition of the evening. We did say this was seven rounds, seven man team really, right? It should have also been eight rounds. Okay, we've had fin weight, we've had flyweight, phantom, feather, light welter. The last one was a middle, and now we come to the heavyweight contest of the evening between Kim Jae Jung, third band of Korea, and Morris Young, British champion. These are the big boys then, the heavyweights. Morris Young, British champion, 1988 and 89 from Northampton. Kim Jae Jung, third band, gold medalist in the national take taekwondo championships in Korea. These then are the big men. Just as in any other sport, it's the heavyweights that people really do like to see. Nothing more impressive than a big man showing technical skill. Oh my. Young coming out, flicking out the lead leg. Changing stance. Punch attempt, too close to screen. Kim Kei Jung trying a back thrust kick. This is. Ah, and a walking through, dropping axe kick attempt. Doesn't score. Korean looks quicker off the mark than Young.
I can't quite see through that fast enough. by Morrishow, very, very heavy. Take off not fast enough at all. Very, very scrappy. No real scores so far. Referee indicating simultaneous hitting. Round kick attempt by the Korean. Now looking very, very heavy. Not, not really displaying much technique. The end of the first round, I'll give it to the Korean on work right there. The Korean was pecking away there. And uh, Young looking like he wants too much time and too much distance to get his techniques in. Okay, round two then. Ah, oh, an axe kick by the Korean there. Catching Young. And a round kick. Young seems to have livened up a little bit. Oh, good. Good. Round kick attempt. Good. Young's waking up. A little bit scrappy though. Axe kick previously by the Korean must have scored. Two half hearted axe kick attempts there and a spinning back kick attempt. Continues it, spinning round, kicking again, just catching. Jung really wants too much distance and too much time to get his techniques. He's looking very, very heavy indeed. And spinning hook attempt by the Korean. That's the best technique we've seen so far by Young. High round us kick to the head. It's been hook kick by the Korean. Jump back to us kick to the head by Kim Jai Young. That's the end of round two. Well, Morris Young certainly got to find something now in the interval. He's way behind on my scorecard. The Korean is working away. Nothing very clean, but he's still picking up techniques. And Young is looking too heavy, too slow. Not really fast enough either to initiate attack or to counter. Very big man, of course. It's much, much harder for a man of his size to, to be quick off the mark, but he's got to try. He's got to get on his toes and move around. He's got to make it difficult for the career. He's just standing there, rock solid. Okay, coming up to the last round now. Um, just taking time out to thank the WTF for putting together this super, super contest and allowing us to see the Korean champions uh, on our home. And uh, it's been a wonderful competition. I've certainly enjoyed myself here tonight. So Morris Young then, he's back against the wall, desperately trying to pull something out, getting caught by the Korean now. Ah. 
again, you know, just routine, not really mobile enough. Up on his toes, moving around. We've seen some super skills here tonight. We've seen flying techniques. We've seen people moving sideways and doing techniques, moving backwards and using techniques. We've seen some lovely action. Game effort by the British squad, not really good enough. Koreans have shown their class throughout the evening. And the way this one's shaping up, I think we're going to see a 7-1 victory for the Koreans. Warning for talking there by the referee. And an axe kick there, just brushing Young Ted in a round kick attempt. Korea now taking over. Punch attempt by Young, a bit close. Nothing much happening for Morris Young. Just rooting there, just waiting for the Korean. Falling further and further behind on points. If there's a lesson here to be learned for the English boys, perhaps it's that the relevant could spend some more time examining their speed of initiation. Certainly the Koreans are faster off the mark tonight, both in countering and initiating attacks. I think that's made a difference. They've been lighter on their feet, they've moved around, they've been genuinely faster. So perhaps it's something the English team can look at. Once again, just like to take the opportunity to thank the WTF and all the officials and backroom people who've been working.